we are learning how to do a one sample z test. In this example, I'm going to teach you how to do the one sample z test by hand. In the previous video, we walked through the first three steps of hypothesis testing selecting a test, establishing the null and alternative hypotheses, and determining the critical value. Now we are ready to calculate the statistics. We will begin with the formula for a z test. This formula looks very similar to the formula that we used for calculating a z-score, except for the denominator. For reasons that I explained in the video about the central limit theorem, the denominator will be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. This is called the standard error of the mean. So let's apply this formula. Again, our research question is whether the average age of the sample of LinkedIn users is different from the U.S. population of social networking users. The population mean is 36.9. The population standard deviation is 10. The sample size is 25, and the sample mean is 44.2. To use the z-test formula, we will plug in these values. First, we will calculate the standard error of the mean, abbreviated sigma sub m or se sub m. We plug in 10 and 25. The square root of 25 is 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Second, we will plug in the standard error of the mean to the z-test formula. z equals 44.2 minus 36.9 divided by 2. So this is 7.3 divided by 2, or 3.65. So our z equals positive 3.65. And our critical value, you will remember, is positive 1.96. Clearly, our z of 3.65 is further away from the z distribution mean of 0 than the critical value of 1.96. So we are ready for step five, make the decision. Here we have our normal distribution. We have set two fences for our two-tailed test, one at positive 1.96 and the other at negative 1.96. This contains 95% of the scores inside of the fences and 5% of the scores split between the two tails. The probability of obtaining a specific sample mean inside of these fences is greater than 5%, or 0.05. The probability of randomly selecting a sample with a mean outside of these fences is less than 5%. This is what we mean by alpha equals 0.05. For this example, we're going to focus on the upper fence, the critical value to the right, z equals positive 1.96. We can add our number line across the bottom. These represent sample means. Our population mean is 36.9. The mean of a z distribution is always zero. So the mean of 36.9 corresponds to a z score of zero. We calculated a sample mean of 44.2 which has an accompanying z-score of positive 3.65. We can see that this value is outside of the fence, in the shaded purple area, the region of rejection, and is less likely to occur by chance than 5% of the time. Compare the obtained z-value, 3.65, to the critical value, positive 1.96, from step 2. Since the z obtained exceeds or is further from a z of 0 than the z critical value, the results are statistically significant. If not, the results would not be significant. In this case, z equals 3.65 exceeds the critical value 1.96. So the results are statistically significant. We will reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that there was no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. We reject the idea that there was no difference. We conclude that there was a difference between the sample mean 
and the population mean. So let's review these five steps of hypothesis testing for the one-sample z-test. Step one, select the appropriate statistic. We used the one-sample z-test to compare the sample and population mean when the population standard deviation was known. Step two, state the null and alternative hypotheses. H sub zero, colon, mu equals 36.9. That's the null. H sub 1, colon, mu does not equal 36.9. Step 3. Select a level of significance. We use a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05. The critical value for such a z-test is positive or negative 1.96. Step 4. Calculate the statistics. Our z was a positive 3.65. Remember that it is very rare that we would get a z greater than 3 by random chance, because 99% of the scores are between positive and negative 3. Step 5. Make the decision. The average age of LinkedIn users is higher than the U.S. population of social networking users. z equals positive 3.65, p less than 0.05. Finally, we should write up our findings in proper APA style. We should describe our research question, the type of test we used, sample size, means of the sample and standard deviations when we know them, and the findings. Basically, we should include everything that would be required for someone else to recalculate our statistics. And here is an example of how we might word this. A study was conducted to determine whether the users of the social networking website LinkedIn are statistically significantly different in age than typical users of social networking sites. A z-test was used to compare the average age of a sample of 25 LinkedIn users, mean of 44.2, to the average age of social networking users, mean of 36.9, standard deviation of 10. LinkedIn users are significantly older than the typical social networking user, z equals positive 3.65, p less than 0.05, reflecting the business and corporate focus of the site. Here are some final notes about z-tests. The z-test can only be used when we know the true standard deviation of the population. Unfortunately, we almost never know the true standard deviation of the population, and that is a problem. However, when we do not know the true standard deviation of the population, we can estimate the standard deviation of the population using the standard deviation of the sample. But when we estimate a population parameter from that sample statistic, it creates an interesting problem that we're going to have to solve next time when we talk about t-tests.